Hi, George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. Thank you for joining us today. We're at the Flash Memory Summit 2016 in Santa Clara, California. One of the things we're seeing at the Flash Memory Summit this year is just an unbelievable amount of choices that IT professionals are being faced with in what flash they should use, when, why, and how. Well, how do they make those decisions and really should they be making those decisions? Isn't there a better way to do that? To help me with that conversation, I've invited Lance Smith. He's the CEO of Primary Data. Lance, thanks for joining us today. George, thanks for having me here. So let's morning. talk about this, this is a kind of flash confusion now, right? Yeah. How, how do we What's the best way to manage this? Let's take a look at you know kind of what it looks like from a from a data center perspective. Okay. We can actually sort of work from the inside out. Okay. And when, when I was thinking about it, I said, okay, our first tier that that, that we can talk about is um, right at the memory tier. Right. Okay. And traditionally, right, this is something where we see uh, DRAM, right? It's it's volatile, right? But you could build like uh, uh, memory drives right. that that for the highest level of performance, maybe maybe not for reliability, because as soon as you lose power, you would lose all your data. Sure. But it's uh, super high performance. But what the MV industry has done is they've given us something called an NVDIM. Right. This thing is wicked fast. Right. Okay. Fast on reads, fast on writes. Right. Not particularly big though, right? right? So you've got a tier that's super high performance, but not high smart. capacity. That's right, yeah. right? And, and they, 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 they make these things look like a drive. So pretty much any application can do it. It's sort of like a direct attached drive. Right. Then the, the, the next tier here would be from a, from a server uh, attached. And the server attached, we all know this as being like a, a, a direct attached storage, mm -hmm. uh, an SSD, uh, an NVMe drive, right. right? We're starting to see stuff like that. And then um, when, when they start to implement it, it still looks like uh, a direct attach, but it's got it's got more performance. NVMe. <laughs> there we go. The next one is a sort of a shared tier. So like our, our storage network type of. That's right. Yeah. Okay. So you've got the classic NAS, the classic SAN. But what really is coming on? It's pretty interesting. Is the fact that we've now have the all flash. Arrays. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. What we find interesting about the all flash arrays is that the decision that IT has to make when they want to put one of these type of systems in, it's expensive in comparison to a sort of like a traditional rotating media based off of NAS. Right. And there's two things that we see happening consolidation mm -hmm. of applications onto a single storage that can handle the kind of capabilities, capacity, performance yeah. you know, of an uh, all flash array, or they're actually relegating it um, individually to a single app. Uh, this needed performance, and by the way, that seems to happen on all these types of tiers that are with you know within the data center itself. Right. IT is still having to force to make a choice. Right. Right. I mean, so you, you could back up ten years, and there would be different things in there where we still had these kind of buckets, didn't we? That's right. It's yeah. still a bucket, right? There's, there's this one for one relationship between applications right. and their storage. The last one is archival, and on our archival, we have a, a real low cost, low performance though. Um, solution, it's cloud. Yep. Right? So this is the object based storage. Sure. But I've been listening to Facebook recently and even at this show, they've talking about their JBOF. Yeah. Right? Just a bunch of flash. Right. And this is for what they call their cold storage, right? right. So we've got this JBOF solution that's now available in the marketplace. Right. Okay? But here's the problem. Each one of them requires some specific application. There's yeah. even discussion here at the show that says, hey, what flash solution is good for your application? Right. Why do you have to make a choice? Right. We do know that you can map every single one of these solutions from performance over cost that follows a natural curve. Right. Right? Super low cost, cheap and deep, high performance kind of pricing. Right. right. That's good how you fit that in there. It kind of matches. It kind of works, doesn't it? Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. That. yeah. But we need to figure out how to put all this stuff together. Right. If I take primary data as technology that we refer to as data virtualization, mm -hmm. this entire space of storage is now one global data space. Okay. Okay. You have your applications that are sitting up at the top here. And what we put in between is a control plane based out of band solution okay. we refer to as uh, data virtualization okay okay so out, out of uh, out of the uh, path is really important right because oh, yeah. out of band because that what that means is that now I'm not 
adding additional latency, you're basically just making the connection and then it goes from there. From a control uh, perspective, right? So yeah. basically what happens is the app, when it makes a request for its data, whether mm -hmm. file, block, or storage, what we do in data virtualization is only provide that application with the knowledge of where the data is located. Okay. Okay. So that means those apps can go directly to any one of these types of storage. Got it. Natively, with whatever protocol, whatever connectivity that is necessary for each one of these types of, of storage technologies, right? Whether it, whether it be in memory or something that sits all the way out of the wire up into the cloud, right? Okay. And when we do that, we get the highest level of performance. So if you're paying for high performance, uh, low latency, mm -hmm. high bandwidth, you get that natively. All, we, okay. all we're in is a control path, right? Okay. During that first request for finding out where the data is at. Now, am I defining this like through, say, policies, or do you guys just like automatically take care of stuff? How does that work? So that's a really good question. Um, you could do all of this manually today. Okay. You can stop your app. You can take data and go and move it from, let's say, your shared storage and manually place it over in, you know, into your uh, memory dim. Right. Right. And then kick the app back up again after you've reconfigured it. To to point towards uh, you know where its storage is at, and sure. it would run high performance, right? Uh -huh. But we know for a fact on a day-to-day -day basis that data itself changes in how active it is, right? Sure. It's hot one day, it's cold the next, right? right? So the things have to move. That's the next thing that we actually bring into this technology to make all of these useful and automated and allow the ability to change dynamically. Okay. And it's data orchestration. Okay. That's something that we brought to the market in terms of the concept that says we now can take data and move it from one tier to the next on demand and based off of objectives. Okay. So we have a tier of objectives that are you know, pretty classic. It's either it falls in the category of performance, IOPS, latency, bandwidth, or protection. Mm -hmm. Like how you know how, how many copies this do I have to make? Does it have to be available in, through disaster recovery, high availability, right? right? Each one of these types of stores, each one of them has their own attributes of performance or protection. Gotcha. Like when we come all the way to the memory side, even if it's DRAM based, we know it's going to lose power. So it's not the highest level of protection. Right. When it's active, it is, right? But if you lose power, you probably want to go to an MD DIM. Right. You can actually measure that as part of your objectives. Okay. But to move it and make a decision to load balance all your resources, you need to have to have something we call smart objectives. Okay. So as things change, let's say one day data is very hot. Right. And that app has been using that data for let's say 30, 45, 50 days. Mm -hmm. But then like six months later, it gets to be colder. Mm -hmm. Why should it be sitting at your highest performance tier? Make room for another application sure. to make use of it. We actually can see that and move the data off to a cheaper, colder tier. And all that's happening transparently. I don't have to shut my application down or anything. That's right. And okay. as a matter of fact, as data is moving, whether it's being promoted up into a higher, a higher performance tier or pushed down into a lower cost tier, yep. the data is always accessible in flight. Right, so let's say it's six months later, all of a sudden that data becomes hot again. We'll promote it back up into your highest performance tier if the ob objective allows it. Mm -hmm. And it's still accessible by that app, and all of a sudden your app is now generating more transactions Very cool. per second. So just before we wrap up real quick, so it, this is software only? Uh, That's right. Okay, and so then they, do they just go to your site and download it, or how's that work? So we, uh, it, it, oh, pretty close, right? Okay. You have to come to us, and we offer, um, we have two products. We have one that um, we refer to as a data sphere. This data sphere uh, itself is, in fact, where we... Uh, Keep all the metadata, okay. all the information about all the information that, that is stored of all these different storage. That's one license. Okay. And the other license is sitting with the app, we have a, a product called DSX. Okay. And DSX is actually that data portal that actually makes the request to the data spheres, where is that data located, and tells the, the stack where to go search for it, you know, in the, in the particular storage where the data is actually located. These are actually licensable. Okay. We actually are going to be a G in, in literally days. And then customers can come to us, and um, you can set this up in a VM. You can set it up, you know, in, in uh, bare metal, right, in a, in, into their own appliance. But it's a pure software uh, solution that we're okay. able to create this environment so that people can make best use of all of the resources in their data center. Awesome. Well, uh, thanks for joining us again today. Well, thanks for having us. I really Good. appreciate it. Sure. So there you have it. There's a lot of different flash types out there, but managing them all is sort of circa 15 years ago. So we need uh, some intelligence to help move and manage data. So here's a good example of a way to do that. I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. Thank you for joining us.